Hey folks, welcome back to another video. I want to show you in this video how you can replace Kick 2 with some uh, yeah, basic grid patching. Uh, maybe you want to replace Kick 2 for a long time because you don't like the interface. Maybe you want to use the, a device which has more like a Bitwig interface. Maybe you want to share it with your friends. Maybe you want to use it within Linux. There are multiple reasons why you want to do that. But the best reason is, of course, you want to have some practice and we want to have some fun in the grid. So I'll show you here how Kick 2 looks like. Um, Kick 2. So here this basically is a kick drum generator. We have some kind of oscillator in here. We have multiple multi-stage envelope generators for the pitch envelope, right? It's the pitch here. Then for the amplitude, then for the click sound, which is basically just the sampler playing a click on top. Um, then we have here the click slots where you can load in the samples. Then we have here an EQ, distortion, overdrive, compressor, and a sub oscillator and some volume control. And that's basically it. So it's easy to replace in the grid. I show you here how this works. So instead of kick two, we use, of course, a bully grid in monophonic mode, right? On the left side, it's on monophonic. So in here, we need, of course, a sine oscillator. And the sine oscillator is, uh, is, is, yeah, it's not using here basically the kick or the keyboard input. So we disable the pre chord and we use a basic pitch input here, static pitch input. And I'm going for G0. This is basically the lowest frequency you want to use. And I use G0 because that's usually where I want to tune my kick jumps to. Um, you can, of course, go lower, maybe to C0 or something like this. It's up to you. Go in here. And then we use, of course, a segments envelope. And the segments envelope, we disable here the sustain looping because we don't need this and switch this to one shot mode. And we probably want to go to eight node because we don't want to have this envelope too long. So one eight node is, is perfectly fine for kick drum, I think. And we draw in here an amplitude envelope something like this for the kick drum. Okay, so now we have this on eight note here and we have also the speed slider here where we can change basically um, how fast this envelope plays. At the moment it's one, so one eight note and 0 0.5 is, 0 .5 is basically faster. It's um, yeah 16 note. Then we have two, which is two eight notes. Um, so it's longer. So takes a while, but I'll show you this in a minute how it sounds. Uh, we use an out here, an audio out, and just try this out here. So um, keyboard input, okay. Right, and we can't change the pitch because here the uh, pitch record is disabled and we change, can change the segments, how fast it plays or the scaling of it with this knob, which is really nice. And then the second, um, oh, let's, let's call this actually an yeah, envelope. And now we need the pitch envelopes. So we duplicate this here and call this pitch envelope. And we don't need the audio input here. We only need the signal output. And if you watch this here on an oscilloscope, you can see when we trigger this, we get here basically the shape of this as a signal out, right? So this is exactly what we want to add this to the initial pitch here. So we bring this back here, right? So when the signal here is basically down here, it's the value is zero, the, val the value is zero. If you add value zero to the initial pitch, you end up on the initial pitch, which is G0. But everything here basically gets add up or added up to the initial pitch. So we pitch down from somewhere. So we probably want to dial in here 32 grid to 32. And we want to pitch down here, then lower pitch. So we get this typical pew sound. Right, you can shape this here to wherever you want to your liking, but you can also stay here with this, with this pew sound, and then use here the scaling. You 
you can see we start pretty high over the pitch, which is maybe not what you want. So we use an attenuate to scale the signal here before we go back in here. And we call this uh, upper pitch. And now you can see when we pull this down here, we start basically at the lower pitch. That's, uh, we start at the lower at the lower pitch to pitch down basically. But sometimes it's exactly what you want. You have this nice clicky attack. It depends on what kind of kick drum you want. Okay, nice. So now we add just some kind of noise to that as a click sound. So let's put this in here and blend it in. Yeah, blend it in with the original signal. Right. So now we have basically click on top. This is uh, the noise only. So you can change also the loudness or if you don't want to use a blend, you can use an amplitude or ring modulation for that. Which is also nice. It scales here a bit differently. You can use pink noise, make the noise stereo. Then we can add some distortion at the end. And we can use here the pitch envelope maybe to bring out um, the attack phase out of the distortion, right? So we pull this down. Or bring it in. So we leave basically the attack phase out of the distortion or don't distort that much. So we have more like a clean, yeah, clean attack. Or maybe use this envelope here. So this is possible. Um, if you don't like to use noise here, you can also use a sampler, of course. Something like this. And then um, maybe load in a sample here, like this. I don't know how this sounds. Um, then just replace this. This is a knock sound here. Or maybe we exchange here this for blend. But this one here takes in the pitch input. We disable this. So it stays on the original pitch. So you can see we blend in here basically a sample on top of our uh, generated uh, kick drum and it adds up pretty well because we have also a distortion on the end which kind of glues it a bit together. And we can shape the pitch sound or the pitch envelope. So all kinds of different possibilities you can use to shape your kick drum. Another possibility is to use also the envelopes here, or maybe create another envelope for that and shape um, here some things on the oscillator. For instance, here the fold. Or maybe I use this envelope here. All right, this is also possible. Or maybe use the output here of the sample and phase modulate the sine oscillator. I'll also maybe use here this envelope for that. So we can blend or glue basically the sample with the main oscillator a bit better together. So you can experiment in all kinds of directions. That's, that's what I want to tell you. Um, you have so many possibilities to shape your sound. Um, that's not possible within Kick 2 because Kick 2 has basically a focused use case. And if it's not in there, you can't do it. But in Bitwig, you can. You add all your devices you need 
add stuff on top, modulate stuff uh, with different devices, and then you get different results. Um, you can also replace the dis distortion, which you kind of do use in kick two. So we can replace this here with a new transfer uh, device, right? Where you can draw in, um, where you can draw in your own uh, distortion sound. It's also not possible in kick two. That's the original sound. Right? It's also nice to do sometimes. Get some overtones out there. But sometimes here, um, using uh, distortion is pretty fine. Maybe a wave folder could be also nice. Let's try this out. Yeah, also nice. Hard clip. It gets you all different sounds to different places. And you can always shape here the, the pitch envelope. Yeah. You can download the preset as you can see it in the background for free in the description below. No strings attached, just, cl just click the link, download it and use it in the current beta version of Bitwig Studio 5. And um, that's just one example of the power of Bitwig Studio basically that you can recreate uh, certain VST plugins uh, with Bitwig native modules or devices which in my opinion adds up to the value of owning Bitwig Studio uh, because you, you not only can replicate it or rebuild it, um, you can also extend it and customize it to your own liking and come up with some different ideas. Whereas when you own the plugin, you are stuck basically with the interface, you are stuck with how the plugin works and that's basically it. The only basically drawback we have in Bitwig Studio is that we can't build custom interfaces, which is the only power um, power of VST plugins that are left basically. But when we have some kind of interface designer, maybe in the future or somewhere, we can build custom interfaces and you can completely go wild with all this stuff. So um, this is just one example. This is basically kick two for me in the grid and I probably never use kick two again because I can just use this and I can tweak it to my likings. But I also um, created a lot of different tutorials on different devices I recreated inside of the grid. So something like RC20 by Excel and Audio or DSEQ3 by TB Pro Audio or Sooth, Gain Aim or something like um, uh, Auto Gain by Hornet, um, Textures, Infiltrator by Devious Machines, uh, something like Stutter Effects or something like Glitch at the Glitch VST or something like Grain Delays or Cluster Delays or the Morph EQ by Minimal Audio. So a lot of things I already did in the grid to some extent to replicate these kind of devices and it's much fun it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of practice actually also to learn how these devices work and how you can replicate it and come up with certain you know different paths along the way and um, branch out in different directions it's sometimes really interesting and um, yeah that's basically the value of Bitwig Studio also that you can do this um, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Uh, don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel, of course. And thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.